And finally tonight, continuing questions about the government bailouts at the height of the financial crisis. Tomorrow's jobs report will provide the latest snapshot of how the economy is faring. A former government watchdog says some of the key decisions made in 2008 are still resonating now. NewsHour economics correspondent Paul Salmon has the story. It's part of his ongoing reporting, Making Sense of Financial News. Neil Borofsky was a 38-year-old U.S. attorney in New York. Prosecuting Colombian drug lords and domestic housing scam artists, when President Bush chose him in the fall of 2008 as Special Inspector General to oversee TARP, the Troubled Asset Relief Program. A lifelong Democrat, Borofsky was retained by the Obama administration. The job as top cop at TARP meant guarding the $700 billion bailout fund from fraud. But in his two-year tenure, Borofsky clashed repeatedly with Treasury officials in charge of the program, who, he says, undercut or ignored his efforts to hold big banks accountable for what they did with taxpayer dollars. He's now written a tell-all account of his disillusioning years in D.C., bailout, his attempt to disillusion readers as well. We sat down with Borofsky at New York University School of Law, where he now teaches as a senior fellow. Neil Borofsky, welcome. Thank you. What are you trying to accomplish with this book? There's so much anger out there, you know, on the left, on the right, Occupy Tea Party, um, that recognize intuitively that there's something wrong with our financial system. And I wanted to write this book so people could understand um, that they're right and give them the actual evidence, the actual anecdotes of what happened in Washington and how much their government um, has been serving the interests of Wall Street uh, over the interests of the taxpayers who funded their bailout. We have the Troubled Asset Relief Program hundreds of billions of dollars, which is going to supposedly fix the problem and save the economy. And what went wrong with that in your view? Well, originally what TARP was supposed to do, uh, based on what Congress put into the bill, the, what Treasury promised, um, was to do more, of course, than just save the banks. Because when the bubble burst, it just wasn't bad only for the banks, it was really bad for Main Street. And there was a huge problem with foreclosures um, across the country. So where TARP went wrong was they did the first thing, which was help prevent a complete financial collapse by saving and then later protecting the largest giant banks. But it didn't do anything else. But isn't it a good thing that the banks were saved? We are not facing financial Armageddon. Uh, and it's because, arguably, the financial system was saved, was bolstered by, by programs like the Troubled Asset Relief Program. The fact that it's a good thing that the banks didn't go down and take the entire economy down with it does not absolve the responsibility that Treasury was given and the administration was given to do more than just shovel hundreds of billions of dollars into the banks. Money that ended up you know, in the executives' pockets, even though they drove these institutions into the ground. And if you think it was a good thing, ask all those people who are unemployed. Ask the millions of people who have unnecessarily been, been foreclosed, and the potential 10 million that still might be. Well, but you were there carping about how TARP was being run. And in the view of Treasury, you were somebody who wasn't helping restore the confidence that the system needs to proceed and recover. I didn't take an oath of office in order to cheerlead um, bad policies and to turn and look away when, when they did things that harmed, actually harmed people um, and protected the banks instead of what they were supposed to do. But, but you say bad policies, the policies worked. The government, for example, got paid back. You kept worrying about fraud in these programs and the government has gotten it's money back, hasn't it? No. <laughs> I mean, TARP is still, Treasury itself is projecting, I think, about $70 billion in TARP losses. In fact, Treasury is projecting that TARP will ultimately cost $60 billion, mainly for programs to help struggling homeowners, it says. As for the $245 billion of TARP funds spent on banks, Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner insists they've already turned a profit. Right now it's $20 billion we earn for the taxpayer. Very carefully designed. Right very now you earn $20 billion. That's the interest the rate on the money that... On the that, bank investments. They're, right. they're, they're, most of it's back in the Treasury. Right. The on Charlie Rose last week, right Geithner right rejected yeah. Borofsky's main claim as well, that Treasury Some put Wall Street still. before Main Street. Of course, what our job was to protect Main Street, the economy, the average American, 
from the failures in a failing financial system. That's what we did, and that is a just and necessary thing. And to have let it burn would have been much more damaging to Main Street, the average American, than what we did. I don't know, look at what Europe's going through now. And ask yourself, can you find an example of something as effective and powerful as the strategy we designed over that period of time? I don't, I don't believe you can find an example of that. I'm not for one second suggesting that it's not a good thing that our financial system didn't collapse, but the flaws that were existing back in 2006, 2007, 2008 have gotten even more severe. The banks are now 20 to 25 percent bigger because of government policy that, that saw problems with too big to fail banks and decided to make them even bigger. So how can it be that there hasn't actually been effective legislation to break up the banks? This is exactly the problem. This is where the financial interests have captured the governmental institutions. The biggest disillusionment um, was seeing how our elected officials and our appointed officials would put the interest of, of the giant financial institutions, the banks, banks that they had previously worked for or banks they hoped to return to go work for once again uh, over the interest of struggling homeowners uh, and over the interest of the broader economy. It's a problem that our leaders, and this, this were Democrats and these were Republicans, all catered to the interests of financial institutions over that of the American people. That transcends politics. And is it because they had worked for the banks in the past and hoped to work for them again that they were, in your term, captured by the banks? I think that's a large part of it. And I don't even mean this in a malevolent way, like they're evil people because they worked for a bank. Um, look, to do this type of program, you're gonna need to have some people, uh, of course, from the financial industry. It would be crazy not to. Um, but you also have to recognize that when you spend decades, years in, on Wall Street and come to the government, you don't suddenly check everything that you've learned, your approach and your ideology at the door. Um, you bring it with you. And that's one of the reasons why I believe there was such this view, this, this deference to the banks and this belief what's good for the banks is good for the country um, and that we didn't need the types of protections that I was advocating because of that core ideology. So what's going to happen? Where are we now? If we don't change our ways, if we don't do something about the size of these banks, we're going to end up in another financial crisis. And because we don't have as much powder in the keg because of how much money we've spent, um, and because the banks are bigger now, it's going to be a bigger, more devastating financial crisis. You actually think that's going to happen? I don't think it. I know it's going to happen if we don't stop this. Risk is going to pile up in ways that we don't even imagine, and it will blow up again. Neil Borowski, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.